Welcome to the interview. I'm Dan Hollander and our guest today is uh, quite a restaurant guy and a food specialist. I call him Johnny Fleet. Good Hello, to Dan. have you with us, Johnny. Well, hey, glad to be here. Talking about my favorite subject almost, and that's food. And it must be yours too. Well, I tell you what, I find myself eating all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's real noticeable with me, not quite as noticeable with you. You weren't in the food business forever. You did a lot of other things and actually started working, what, around the age of 10 or so? Well, you know, um, I started mowing yards at a very young age. And then after that, um, just mowing yards in the neighborhood. You know, there's a little country store uh, in our neighborhood out there in the New Prospect community. And Mr. Sims, everybody called him Sonny, he, he's, he was hiring uh, individuals, you know, to help in the mm -hmm. store. And so whenever I turned 15 years old, I went down there and told him, I said, Mr. Sims, I'm going to be turning 16 next year. And I said, uh, you know, I'd like to put my name down to work down here. And he knew, I didn't know it at the time, but uh, he he knew I mowed yards, so he knew that I was a pretty good worker, I guess. And he said, well, hey, why don't you just start coming in after school on Friday, and I'll let you work Friday and Saturday. So I started working whenever I was 15 at this little country store. Mm -hmm. Did you like that? Uh, yes, I did. I liked the, I liked the paycheck. Mm -hmm. And then um, and, and then after, you know, working there for, you know, going through high school, uh, his health had turned bad whenever, as, as soon as I graduated. And, and I, I tell everybody I was in the right place at the right time. He, I ended up having the opportunity to buy his little, mm -hmm. you know, grocery store. How'd you like owning that? You know, uh, at the time, I didn't really think about being an owner. I uh, didn't really have time to really think about anything because once I bought it, hey, there were so many things to do on a daily basis. Hey, I just, hey, I was just doing doing things and didn't really think about owning the store or anything. I was just working. Yeah, got you. One exciting day I know at the store was a robbery. That, that had to have made well, you think a little. <laughs> well, it wasn't actually a robbery. Uh, what happened, it was, uh, hey, it was just one night, and being out there in the country, I had a couple of drink machines uh, on the front, mm -hmm. you know, where we'd sell drinks whenever I was closed. Well, uh, hey, one night, well, what happened, those things would always get broken into. So right. whenever, I put, whenever I put a security system in the grocery store, I said, hey, hook up the drink boxes. And I remember the guys doing the security said, oh, nobody hooks up their drink boxes said, you know, people break into them and, you know, that's it. So don't go to the expense of hooking them up. But I did anyway. So, hey, after the security system being, you know, being in there, after, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, hey, there, somebody's breaking into them. Mm -hmm. And it's about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I step out on my front porch, and, and hey, I had a 38 automatic. <laughs> and, and it was a big van. Well... Let me back up. Somebody broke into them prior to that, and they were in a Lincoln Continental white one. And what happened, it got away. I'd shot at it, but it got away. And so whenever this uh, van pulled up, I said, well, there's no way I can miss that van. And so, hey, I just unloaded my 38 on it, called the sheriff, and told them they were headed towards Pulaski. And it's funny, the the Plasky Sheriff ended up pulling them over, called back to the Lawrence County Sheriff and said, hey, uh, did uh, Fleeman shoot at him? And the Sheriff said, Johnny, did you shoot it, shoot at him? I said, yes, I did. And the Sheriff come back over the intercom and said, yes, yeah, so there's bullet holes all in this van. <laughs> and, but anyway, that, it, was, it was scary at the time. And, you know, thinking about it, if I had to do over, I probably wouldn't have done that. But with, but hey, they escorted them back over to Lawrence County, and um, and whenever they pulled up in the parking lot, what was neat, the two ladies come out of this van, and they waltzed in there, and one of them said, "I want to know who was shooting at us." And hey, I was standing there. I said, "Well, I was." She said, "Well, you know, you could have killed one of us." I said, "Ma'am, you didn't have no business robbing me." 
And but after that, you know, nobody ever messed with my drink boxes because I, I think not. I think the word got out and said <laughs> said, "Hey, if Flamin will shoot at a couple of women, he'll shoot at anybody." <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, that was my tale of being. Then I got the nickname of being sheriff of New Prospect there there for a while. So <laughs> is that name still good? Uh, it could be. Could be. It could. Could be. be could not be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. When did you actually get in the restaurant business? Um. Right around 1986, I sold my grocery store and thought, you know, as long as I stayed in the food business, I'd have some form of security as long as people had to eat, you know. So, and I thought if I could do a good job being in the food, you know, whether it's the grocery store or the restaurant business, uh, you know, I felt like I'd have some mm -hmm. kind of security. So I got in the restaurant, I sold my store right around 85 or 86 and bought a little hamburger joint up in Gallatin, Tennessee and kept it for a couple of years and then the brass liner that came up for sale and uh, I had a chance to buy the brass liner back and I took took that place over in September of 88. Mm -hmm. What makes a successful restaurant? I guess everybody's got different thoughts on that but in well, your in your opinion. Well it, it takes you know there for a long time I really had a bad reputation of being the probably the worst person to work for in Lawrenceburg and and it comes back being in the restaurant business you've got to have a really good set of standards and you know I used to always preach about everything trying being perfect and I had a waitress one time said said Johnny said you're crazy he said it won't ever be perfect and but I preached it every day I mean if you if you'll work on ten things to be perfect you know, if you'll get seven or eight of them perfect, then you're you're batting pretty good. Yeah. You know, and that's why I looked at it. But being in the restaurant business, you know, what makes a successful uh, restaurant person? I, you know, I guess it's the line at the door. You know, if you've got a line at the door, then you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. uh, I had, you know, read early on that if you did so much sales in the restaurant business you were pretty successful well whenever I bought the brass lantern I wasn't doing those kind of sales and so I thought you know how can I be really successful in the restaurant business and that's everybody that comes in and sits down at that table and this was one of my old sayings that you gotta treat them like kings and queens and, and they've got to leave your building saying man that's the best food and the best service I've ever got. Now granted, hey, we mess up a lot of times, but it's not that we don't try to treat everybody like, you know, kings and queens, yeah. so. In your thoughts, menu selection got to be really important. How do you select what you're going to be serving or how do you change some of that? I guess people don't order some of it sometime and say, well, let's switch to something else. Well, you know, back whenever we're not trying to reinvent the wheel so right, to speak right and whenever I bought the brass lantern it was back in 88 I remember that everybody was going to Huntsville Alabama because they they had opened up a Ruby Tuesdays down there and so I thought well hey I'm just gonna go down there and get one of their menus and so hey I brought one of their menus back and actually pretty well you know, I'm going to say I copied it to a certain extent. You know, I looked at what they had and what they were doing, and I thought, well, hey, if people's driving to Huntsville, Alabama to eat a Ruby Tuesdays, then hey, I'll offer some of the same thing. And so I, I started doing that for my night business, and being in a small town like Lawrenceburg, I depended on people eating with me several times during the week. Mm -hmm. So I knew that. You know, I couldn't get people out there to eat ribs at lunch or steaks because it's really too expensive to spend on lunch. So, so I called my mother up. I said, Mom, I said, you know, hey, would you come down here and help me do a lunch menu? And what I do, what I want to do at lunch is what you do on the holidays. Because there was other, what I call meat and three joints in Lawrenceburg. And to different yourself from, from them, it's like my mother, instead of doing mashed potatoes, we did mashed potatoes, but on, on Thanksgiving, Easter, and Christmas, my mother would put sour cream and cream cheese in her mashed potatoes. 
So that's what we did every day. And then we started doing some of her casseroles that she would do. Because everybody else was doing mashed potatoes, green beans, pinto beans. But, you know, we, we started bringing casseroles to the table. And that's really what started my lunch business. And, and then my lunch business grew into my night business. So got to really hand it, because I wouldn't have cook at the time. I was just flipping hamburgers up in Gallatin, Tennessee, at that hamburger joint. And, uh, but bringing her down with her recipes, a good recipe, you know, makes a good restaurant. Yeah. Looking back then and looking at menus today, what's the one or two big items you just about have to have at your restaurant to be successful? Well, in Lawrenceburg, whenever I bought the Brass Lantern, Bobby Luffman had had it five years prior to myself. And Bobby was doing a thing called uh, the King's Crown. And he, he took Hawaiian bread, sliced it a couple of times, put ham and roast beef on it. And our sandwich at the Brass Lantern, the what we call the quarter crown, is still the number one selling sandwich. Now, you go to my Smyrna restaurant, uh, it's probably my least selling sandwich, you know. <laughs> so, but, you know, in the restaurant, uh, you know, I've had people tell me that they'll come out and eat with me uh, twice a week. And on one night, they order the spaghetti. And then on the weekend, they'll order my hamburger steak. So it doesn't really matter what we put on the menu. People get hooked on their favorites, and that's what they eat all the time. Well, that's what you're looking for, right? To get hooked yeah. on that menu. <laughs> yes. I mean, I find myself basically eating the same thing, you know, whenever I eat there. Mm -hmm. You've been involved in sauces as well, uh, and fruit tea and, and things like that. How did you get involved in that? Just something came along, somebody said, hey, that would be good if you had so-and-so? Well, on a Friday and Saturday night, we would uh, would be real busy, and then all somebody would the server would come back and say, "Hey, there's somebody out there at the table won't take home some of your steak marinade." And at the time, you know, we'd be busy; we wouldn't have nothing to put it in, maybe a to-go Coke cup or something. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, hey, let's let's find a bottler and put it in a bottle. That way, whenever people start requesting this, hey, we can hand them a bottle. And so I started out with my steak marinade. Uh, and then after that, uh, my honey mustard came about. And then after that, it's just, you know, we've added a few uh, other products to our line to give us a little bit better branding, you know, whenever we hit the grocery store shelf. All right, this is the grocery store that I had a chance to buy in 1976. And anyway, Mr. Sims's daughter, she did this little pamphlet and handed out uh, within the community uh, before he actually closed the store. Uh, this is Mr. Sims locking the store for the last time. And this is actually a picture of myself uh, as a stock boy whenever I was there, whenever I was about uh, 16 years old. But the store hey, has a lot of memories. Um, hey, during the holidays, uh, hey, the little old ladies would bring cookies and cakes down there and hey, we'd share them with the community. Hey, it's, it's just a real close-knit community, new prospect. All right, this is the old uh, Sim store back in the day. It really set close to the highway. And in this picture, this is uh, Sonny Sims' daddy on the right. And this is, uh, uh, it's a Durham. His name is Joe Durham on the left. They tore down this store, and they built the one that I had in the picture previous. And what's neat, right here is the old lock from, from this store building. And uh, anyway, I'm going to incorporate it into my new new home I have. How many restaurants you have now? Uh, six. six. Six locations. That's enough, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more than enough on some days. Well, it, it's enough for me right now. I mean, we're looking at probably uh, doing another concept or two, you know, in the near future. I was going to ask you, what's in the future? Not necessarily for you, but in restaurant business. Uh, we're going to see some big changes in a year or two, maybe? In general. It, well, as far as restaurants, no. I mean, there's different concepts uh, out there in Lawrenceburg. We'll probably hit, you know, get hit with one or two of them in the near future. Uh, you know, we've got a, a new Hampton Inn proposed uh, for Lawrenceburg. I know the gentleman that's building those, and, and he likes to have a restaurant beside of him. So, so we'd like to do something beside of the, the new hotel whenever it hits Lawrenceburg. But, you know, we'll look at different concepts that's working. 
basically like the Ruby Tuesdays concept in Huntsville. You know, we'll find something out there that's working in other parts of the United States and bring it to this town. And you'll know it when you see it, won't you? Yes. Without a doubt. Right. <laughs> How about cooking? You like to cook? Is, is that fun or you mess with it so long? It's Love to not... cook. I hate the mess. <laughs> oh, you, know? you don't like to wash dishes? <laughs> okay. Well, I, I've washed many dishes, but no, I love love to cook. I mean, the good thing about cooking is that um, just experimenting. I mean, people really experiment. I mean, I remember whenever I came out with my marinade, there was only my marinade and probably two or three others out on the shelf. And today, whenever you go to the condiment section, there's 30 or 50 of them. And, it, and that just shows you that people, this generation and the generation before it, people's really been experimenting with cooking. And you see that with all the cooking shows on TV now. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's palate, you know, changes. And you like to cook. Yes. Never never get tired of it. It's always different, isn't it? Well, if my wife is watching this, <laughs> I hate cooking. <laughs> but if she's not watching it, I, you know, I love to get in the kitchen yeah. and, and cook, you know. Well, what catches my attention is this little girl right here. This is, um, I forget exactly how old she, she was there, uh, but this is my stepdaughter. This is Cheyenne Keaton, and uh, which Jackie, her mother, and I got married a couple years ago. This is, uh, this is us three right here. Whenever she turned 16, she wanted to get her driver's license. And even though she can't drive, she still wanted to get her driver's license. So we took her down to the driver's license uh, office, and at the time, they gave her a uh, ID card versus a license. And then I asked her which one of my cars that she liked the best, and she said she liked the yellow one. So I went and got her a personalized plate to put on it. Yeah, you know, we're always, that, that's where it comes back. People really, people hate whenever we take things off because we'll take something off to add something. And, and you have to do that because what happens if, it's like the grocery store shelf. You know, if I come out with an, a new dressing, they they don't have enough room for Johnny Fleeman's new dressing. They'll have to take somebody off to put me up there. Same way in the restaurant business, on that cook line, if I add another ingredient, hey, I've got to make a spot for it. And that's hard to do right now. So we'll look at something that's not selling as much, but if it was selling, somebody's ordered it. And so, so we really get into trouble whenever we start think, taking things off the menu. But we do feature things from time to time that doesn't really throw the kitchen in a you know, kink. I worked up on appetite just sitting here listening to this, Johnny. Well, I'm, well I tell you, you let's you go did, to the lantern. You, you did your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to the lantern and get Great something. to have you with us. We appreciate the time. Well, hey, I, I appreciate you taking the time to you know, ask me these questions and learn a little bit about my business. Yeah. Our guest today, Johnny Fleeman. Thanks, John. All right, thanks, Dan. That's the interview for today. Join us again. Thank you.